It is with deep regret that I inform the Senate of the death on the 1st of January 2022 of the Honourable Sir Ransley Victor Vic Garland KBE, a former minister and member of the House of Representatives for the Division of Curtin, Western Australia from 1969 to 1981. I call on the Leader of the Government in the Senate. Thank you, Mr President. I seek leave to move a motion relating to the death of Sir Victor Garland. Is leave granted? There being no objection, leave is granted. I thank the Senate. Mr President, I move that the Senate expresses its sadness at the death on 1 January 2022 of the Honourable Sir Victor Garland KBE, former Minister for Supply, Minister for Post and Telecommunications, Minister for Veterans Affairs and Minister for Special Trade Representations and former member for Curtin, places on record its gratitude for his service to Parliament and nation and tenders its sympathy to his family in their bereavement. Mr President, we take the opportunity here today to remember the life of the former member for Curtin, Sir Ransley Victor Garland KBE, a man who served as a minister in the McMahon and Fraser governments and who would go on to become the Australian High Commissioner to the United Kingdom. Sir Victor Garland was first elected to the parliament as the member for Curtin in 1969, a seat he would represent until his resignation from the House of Representatives in 1981. During this time, he was re-elected at six different elections by the people of Curtin, a vote of confidence in his ability to effectively represent the beachside Perth electorate. Victor was a West Australian through and through. Born in 1934, he grew up in Perth, gaining his education at Hale School before completing a Bachelor of Arts at the University of Western Australia, majoring in economics. Following in his father's footsteps, Victor practised as a chartered accountant from 1958 until his election to parliament in 1969. During his professional life, Victor maintained an active involvement in the community he grew up in, serving on a number of charities and on the Claremont Town Council from 1963 until 1970. During this time, he also maintained an active involvement in the Liberal and Country League of Western Australia, later of course known as the WA Division of the Liberal Party of Australia, where he held the position of Senior Vice President. Following his election to the Parliament in 1969, in his first speech to the House of Representatives, Victor paid tribute to the sacrifices of his parents and the opportunities he had that he was fortunate enough to have by virtue of their hard work. He acknowledged former Prime Minister John Curtin, after whom his electorate was named, and his predecessor, as the member for Curtin, Sir Paul Hasluck, the 17th Governor-General of Australia. Sir Victor strongly admired the contributions these two sons of Western Australia made, perhaps foreshadowing a way of his own immense contributions to come. Sir Victor was a man that knew what he had come to Parliament to fight for, highlighting in his maiden speech that whilst he believed his electors wanted, to have, wanted him to have an eye to the interests not only of Curtin, but of Western Australia, when those interests are rightly involved in the national interest. He further added, I think my electors want me to act in the interests of Australia, in which each state is an integral part of the Federation, an Australian nation with rising strength, importance and responsibilities. Sir Victor Garland understood at core the meaningful impact of our shared Liberal values in the economic and social prosperity of Australia. Those basic tenets of individual freedom and free enterprise, that businesses and individuals are the true creators of wealth and employment. He highlighted this in his maiden speech, stating that, and I quote, it is as important to the growth of the country that initiative, inventiveness and resourcefulness should be encouraged as it is to have a fair sharing of the nation's wealth. For history shows that the best societies, the richest, the most efficient and the most satisfying in which to live are those in which individual initiative is allowed a wide scope of expression and where innovation, striving and ambition are not stifled. Sir Victor had a quick rise in his political journey, becoming the Minister for Supply in the McMahon government at the age of just 37, a position he would hold from 1971 until the 1972 election. In 1975, after the coalition's historic victory, Victor Garland was again appointed as the minister, this time, for
for Post and Telecommunications and as the Assistant Treasurer. The latter position provided him with a primary role in forming economic policy at a critical time for the newly elected Fraser government. Under Malcolm Fraser's leadership, Victor would also serve as Minister for Veterans Affairs, Minister for Special Trade Representations and Minister for Business and Consumer Affairs. As Minister for Special Trade Representations, Victor Garland undertook significant negotiations with the European community, something of which I can relate and understand the challenges that can equally be involved. This was work he also continued in his post-politics work upon his appointment as Australia's High Commissioner to Britain, a position he held from 1981 to 1983. A testament to his contributions and service at the highest level of public office, Victor Garland was knighted in 1982. So Victor Garland is remembered for the liberal values he not just believed in, but lived out in his approach to public policy. In the same way that Sir Victor honoured those that came before him, the sacrifices of the men and women that built Australia, we honour Sir Victor for his contributions to our nation. He was a proud Western Australian, proud of where he came from, who believed in the infinite potential of Australia, emphasised by his powerful words that no one will now dare say that any objective is not possible for Australia. Indeed, that is true, Mr President. Uh, any objective is possible for our nation, our nation with ambition, with so much pride in all that we seek to achieve. On behalf of the Australian Government and the Australian Senate, I extend our sincerest condolences uh, to Sir Victor Garland's family uh, and our thanks for his service uh, to our party uh, and to the nation. Senator McAllister. Thanks very much, Mr President. I rise on behalf of the opposition to express our condolences following the passing of the Honourable Sir Ransley Victor Garland KBE, a former minister, and I note that he passed at the age of 87. And as I begin, I wish to convey the opposition's condolences to his family and to his friends. So Victor Garland, who I understand was widely known as Vic, lived a life that combined contributions to the private sector with public service. He went from local government to federal government, serving as a minister under Prime Ministers William McMahon and Malcolm Fraser. And from this platform, he would go on to represent the nation as High Commissioner in London, before contributing extensively as a member of private company boards in the United Kingdom and returning to Perth 15 years ago. He was not easily characterised as either a progressive or a conservative within his party. He instead took a pragmatic and constructive approach to politics and to policy. And he routinely sought to make the best of whatever opportunity he had. He was born in 1934 and he grew up in Perth. An alumnus of a state primary school, the prestigious Hale School and the University of Western Australia, from which he graduated with a Bachelor of Arts majoring in economics, he entered the accounting profession. And in doing so, he followed in the footsteps of his father, practising as a chartered accountant from 1958 until he entered the federal parliament. At the same time, he was also an active member of his community, particularly through his service in local government, eventually becoming deputy mayor of the town of Claremont. At the same time, he had been active in the Western Australian Division of the Liberal Party, holding offices, including senior vice president, as well as being a member of the Federal Council of the Liberal Party. And when Paul Hasluck resigned from the House of Representatives in 1969 to become Governor General of Australia, Sir Victor Garland succeeded him as the member for Curtin. I note that in his remarks uh, in his first speech, he was quite generous in acknowledging uh, the significance both of Mr John Curtin, uh, his namesake in the seat, but also his predecessor, Hasluck. And the seat, of course, is named for the great Labor Prime Minister, and it's situated in Perth's affluent beachside suburbs. It's been a comfortably Liberal seat over many decades. Uh, when he made his first speech, Sir Victor acknowledged John Curtin, as I said. And he said this, a man who in times of great difficulty drew credit to himself and indeed to his associates by his straightforwardness and fine qualities, which caused him to tread the highest path of duty. A magnanimous contribution about a person from the other side of politics. So Victor said he felt the awe and honour of being elected a member of the House of Representatives and unusually for the time, he specifically acknowledged the women who were active in his electorate working, as he said, for the principles in which they believe. 
He was preoccupied by the international affairs of the time, remembering that Australia was fully engaged in the, in the Vietnam War. He spoke of his concerns about the increase of nuclear and non-nuclear aggression, as well as the role of China, which echoes some sentiments more recently expressed. Understandably, for someone of his political persuasion, he emphasised the need for the support of the growth and development of non-communist Asian states, but he also praised the creation of regional institutions such as the Asian Development Bank and the Asian and Pacific Council. He noted that the economic growth of Southeast Asian countries was dependent on their ability to provide social justice, recognising that this was something to which Australia could contribute, and he praised budget commitments to aid and assistance in education in the region. He supported increases in defence funding, but he believed this must also be accompanied by increases in the aid budget. His call for Australia's growing wealth to be shared with neighbours in our region, noting we needed to accept our responsibilities, but also that increasing Australian participation in the leadership would come with the benefit of stronger relationships with Southeast Asian countries. These were prescient comments, and indeed they are still relevant today. As Sir Victor said, Security and economic development are two sides of the same coin. Perhaps fittingly for someone elected to a seat of such significance, Sir Victor Garland spent very little time on the back bench before he was called upon to serve as a minister. He first entered the ministry in the McMahon government in 1971 as Minister for Supply, a portfolio that encompassed a wide range of responsibilities that we would now largely associate with the Industry and Resources Minister. He added minister assisting the Treasurer to his duties before the defeat of that government at the end of 1972, when Gough Whitlam led Labor into power for the first time since 1949. That took Sir Victor into opposition, and in the ensuing three years he held shadow portfolios, including spokesperson on the Public Service and Australian Capital Territory, as well as being chief opposition whip in the House of Representatives. Now, this latter role was not one he especially sought but it seems it did enable him to make use of his number counting skills behind the scenes. And I was intrigued to read this, I think from the Adelaide Advertiser, that this involves something of a personal metamorphosis. He had developed, it says, uh, Mr Garland developed a reputation for a certain aloofness when he became supply minister during the final 12 months of the McMahon government because of the fairly formal way that he ran his portfolio. The image changed quite dramatically during the three years of Labor government Mr Garland made a point of getting to know press men and Parliament House workers and often attended the late night round of parties that made Parliament House swing during the sitting weeks. It's an intriguing metamorphosis. Um, but he was, of course, a conspicuous supporter of Malcolm Fraser when he successfully seized the leadership of the Liberal Party and the opposition from Billy Snedden. And this led to a return to the front bench when Mr Fraser became Prime Minister at the end of 1975. Uh, to the ministry. This was a personally challenging period. He resigned his new ministries early in 1976 after being the subject of electoral bribery charges, which were dismissed by a magistrate. His exile lasted 19 months. Between 1977 and 1980, he went on to hold portfolios including veterans' affairs, special trade representations, business and consumer affairs, and assisting in industry and commerce. With his accounting background and previous experience in the Treasury portfolio, he was particularly well suited to these economic portfolios. In these roles, he represented Australia overseas on numerous occasions and pursued policy reforms ranging from tariff simplification and increased customs vigilance to competition regulation and consumer education. His tenure as a minister came to an end when he accepted appointment as Australia's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom in London at the end of 1980. He began his new role in 1981 and served until 1983. And his previous experience, particularly in the trade portfolio, meant he was well placed to take up the diplomatic position. In 1982, he was made Knight Commander in the Order of the British Empire. At the conclusion of his term, he remained in the United Kingdom, as it turned out for quite an extended period of time. He took up positions on a number of corporate boards, making a substantial contribution in a range of areas. He returned to Perth in 2007. So Victor Garland was one of the last surviving ministers in the McMahon government. With his passing, Tom Hughes is the only remaining Liberal member of that ministry. And as we mark Sir Victor's death, we again pause to reflect, as we did yesterday in expressing condolences following the death of Don Grimes, on the diminishing number of living members of the governments that led Australia through the 1970s and the 1980s. 
and in doing so we consider the impact of those governments in shaping the nation that we are today. Through his roles in both the McMahon and Fraser governments, Sir Victor made a contribution to building modern Australia. He would go on to represent our nation overseas, capping his public service career in this country first, with service to it in the United Kingdom, and then with service to that country as well. The opposition expresses our condolences following the passing of Sir Victor Garland, and we again convey our sympathies to his family and to his friends. Senator Dean Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr President. On behalf of uh, my West Australian Senate colleagues, I'd just like to uh, associate ourselves with the remarks of the Leader of the Government in the Senate, Senator Birmingham, and those of Senator McAllister. Unfortunately, I never met Vic Garland, as he was affectionately known across the West Australian Liberal Party, but he is a testimony to the strength of the West Australian Liberal Party. Over many, many years now, we have spent, sent people from those comfortable suburbs of Curtin uh, to our national parliament, and they've served us with distinction. Of course, um, Alan Rocher, who was a member of the Senate for a short time. Of course, Julie Bishop, Sir Paul Hasluck, and Celia Hammond now follows in those uh, very, very esteemed uh, steps. Uh, what is often overlooked is, for a brief period, um, Vic Garland uh, worked closely with another famous West Australian, but we don't often think of him as a West Australian, and that was uh, Sir Billy Sneddon, who was born in West Perth, uh, who was educated at the University of Western Australia and was the inaugural chairman of the Young Liberal Movement of Australia. So I think uh, in uh, listening to the contributions today from Senator Birmingham and Senator McAllister, uh, those of us from Western Australia have been reminded of the strength of the WA division uh, and the very, very, role, very, very, very strong role we have played in sending very credible, competent people to our national parliament and indeed uh, to the prize of all prizes, and that is to the High Commissioner post uh, in London. So. Um, Again, on behalf of the West Australian Senators, uh, but all members of the West Australian Liberal Party, just like to associate ourselves with those remarks, and we also send our condolences, of course. Thank you. I ask honourable senators to join in a moment silent to signify assent to the motion. The motion is carried.